I am Napoleon. I am Emperor. Burn it! What kind of challenges and, and rewards does, does the Napoleon area bring to the Total War franchise? Probably the biggest challenge is how you tell an individual story in a game like Total War. So in a game that's traditionally um, completely sandbox, where a player chooses a kind of a nation with no identity other than its flag, um, you know, and, and takes it out into the world. Um, Telling the story of a man is, 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 a, is a big deal, and it's, and it's difficult. The reward, however, is the sheer sense of achievement you get from um, you know, interweaving a story into a game like Total War. And for players, the reward will definitely be kind of historically doing things better, faster, bigger, and bolder than Napoleon ever did you know, when playing as France and going through that story and, and perhaps you know, beating the great generals of history. Uh, or indeed going the other way around um, and playing as the opposition and destroying, you know, kind of of the, the, the French uh, attempts to, to grow and become masters of Europe. So it's, uh, it's, it's a very, very interesting time for players to play. Um, and indeed, you know, it's, he's one of the generals that's always referenced in every discussion about history and tactics. Well, you know, if you'd have done this versus this, or if Napoleon had commanded this or done that, now's the chance. This in terms of, you know, in terms of rewards, victories, and all those what-if questions, you know, this is where you put those things to the test. Could you have fought better than he did? Could you have done his campaigns faster, better, with less waste, you know, with less men dead? Or could you have stopped him in his tracks? Try. There's nothing stopping you taking Napoleon's route and using his roads and his conquests. Um, but of course, if you want to go your way, you do it your way. Um, I should also mention that as well as the campaigns, there's the historical battle scenario. So you can play through all of Napoleon's actual battles as they were set out on their battlefields. Um, so there is that element of it too, if you're a you know, pure historian. Um, but of course, you know, if you want to do the Total War experience, which is play as France, experience the French narrative, but drive the story yourself, um, then you can do that. Adding detail to the battlefield is something that you've done with every every iteration of, of Total War. What what would you say is the, the, the biggest improvement in terms of, of sort of fidelity on the battlefield this this time around? Um, well, I mean. Uh, basics to be to be shallow about it. The, the biggest improvement is visual. I mean, even with a game you know as accomplished as Napoleon's predecessor, Empire, you know, which looked great on high-end systems and stuff and looks cool, um, Napoleon visually stands apart. I mean, it's the level of detail we're able to get now on individual units. You know, um, like the guys' kind of trousers, buckles, belts, shoulders, rifles. That kind of fidelity we just haven't been able to achieve before. We've also got a whole new level of particle effects that some incredibly gifted programmers are working on. You know, in, in the studio who um, allow you to do things like you know create these long drifting pools of smoke and have sand and dust blown across the horizon and heat haze shimmering everything else you know all of those things are small touches but when you put them together you get a much more realistic landscape you know you've got this kind of um, rifleman lining up to shoot uh, shoot volleys of rifle at each other and this drifting smoke going across and you send horses in and all this dust is kicked up behind them you know as they race down and the sun's baking all this heat off the surface and it it, it comes alive in kind of the chaos and the real sense of grandeur you know of, of epic slaughter that was the Napoleonic period. There's a number of interesting kind of uh, differences that we've put into the Napoleonic era. I mean, Napoleon changed the face of warfare. It's very much, I, know, I hark back to Rome every now and again, but it's a bit like the Marius reforms in Rome, where essentially Napoleon kind of created a drilled army that, that relied on certain sets of tactics and disciplines, um, you know, and certain new technologies, which really changed the face, you know, of warfare in the late 18th and, you know, and early 19th centuries. Um, and he, he, he comes across essentially as a leader of change. He, he makes all of these differences. Now, as well as the visual differences you'll see, you know, you get kind of much more dapper gentlemen with, you know, like well-fitting uniforms because they're professionally drilled soldiers. They're not like just members of the aristocracy who've got a horse and so they can be cavalry or, you know, kind of poor beggars who are pushed into the infantry and then have to go ahead and be slaughtered for the, uh, for the enemy. Um, these are professional cadres of drilled soldiers who professionally are paid for their work, you know, and join up and, and, are, and are damn good as a result of it. And the uniforms reflect that. It gives them pride in their appearance. And that pride in their appearance sounds small, but it's a big deal because it means that all the uniforms and everything else have to be different. Everybody has to look the way they look, um, you know, in terms of their, their individual appearance. And as well as making those differences, the individual infantry units themselves, so whereas you say, like, previously you'd have had uh, maybe, say, French infantry and British infantry, and they'd have, um, they'd have looked different but been, in terms of stats, about the same. 
Now all those stats are different too. So, it, it, so French infantry is not the equal of British infantry. In some situations they'll be better, in some situations they'll be worse. Same thing with Russians, Austrians, Prussians. The way in which you use the forces is very important this time around because they're no longer equal statistically. Some are faster reloading, longer range. You know, and I mean, I'm talking by now I'm talking about the same unit. So say like you know certain line infantry versus certain other line infantry. They'll be outranged or they'll be out reloaded. You know, there's a lot of ways in which to play the game now because those stats are now different. Thank you.